This topic has come up several times in the forums I've participated in, and the subject reemerged recently at powerstroke.org. During this discussion, renting these was brought up because the purchase cost tends to be high. It's high even with the few rentals. I can understand the cost to some extent, given how many hours I put into these various designs, testing how the engine is balanced on the hook, which varies depending on what components remain on the engine, the starter being the main example. And once you are on the hook and lifted, the only way to reposition the engine is by using ratchet straps from components like the engine mounts or exhaust manifolds. Not that using them is wrong or problematic. I could have left the designs very simple and been done with it. But I get OCD. Version 2 is a shorter version of my first design, which was too nose high in my viewpoint. It would be the lowest cost option as it does not require a shackle, only the metal and welding. The gussets spread the load over the base plate. Version 3 was conceived with a visual appeal of more mass, heavier looking while not excessive. It adds the cost of a shackle, but the plate offers adjustability for a manual transmission engine and its heavy flywheel. There is some side to side adjustability depending on how you place the washers on the shackle pin. More adjustability could be done if the shackle was wider, but as you do that, you sideload the fillet welds. Version 4 was based on the design sold under the Ford Rotunda name for the 6.7 liter engines and mentioned by Hydro at Powerstroke.org. With a small stress point, I plated the base rather than using a thick plate, so it's three quarters of an inch in the stress area and spreads the load. This requires a countersink unless you put spacers under the plate for a bolt hex. I don't think it's worth the extra effort of countersinking if you don't already own the tool. Some people have talked about nose up to connect to the transmission, along with the transmission being high, while others mentioned tail up to clear the cross member. Since I've not put my engine back in the chassis, I don't have an opinion. In the forums, adjustability has been mentioned. There is a carburetor manifold mount sold for lighter gas engines which has adjustability based on the scissors jack design. Using a scissors jack as a parts source was brought up, hunting for a jack in a salvage yard. Hartwig incorporated that design years ago after I gave him the plate dimensions to mount to the block. So version 5 incorporated the fore and aft adjustability, but this uses a more straightforward method than incorporating a scissors jack, screw, and pivots. 
but I used the wrong mark when welding the flanges to the base. Never leave two marks when you're only going to use one, especially when you do it over a couple days. But this brought me to make two changes called version 6. The first was slots for the flanges through the base plate. The slots ensure correct alignment, but another benefit is the welding on the bottom would counteract the heat distortion from welding on the top. The plate bows. Welding on the bottom also provides more weld strength than just the fillets up on top. The second addition was adjustability in two dimensions. To some extent, this would adjust if the starter was mounted or not, or if the engine to transmission alignment was skewed. However, since I have not put the 6.0 back in, I'm not sure how important this is. The limitation is the width of the adjustment bolt. The wider you make this, the bolt is more prone to fail from the bending stress. So I limited the width and used a grade 8 bolt. Grade 9 bulldozer bolts were not available in this length fully threaded. And a grade 9 is not something I look forward to threading by hand.
I guess there is a version 7 too. I used one of the base plates from a design I didn't like to make this fixture to hold the engine while tensioning the head bolts or studs with my two post engine stand. I had used version 1 before, but since I made version 2 out of version 1, I needed something else. This could be a little shorter, repositioned for lift balance with a hole for a shackle. So it would have two purposes, but it's not the favorite of mine. What to do with all this? I'm competent with a drill press, bandsaw, grinders, sanders, but it takes me 45 minutes to lay out and cut a base plate, and I've done eight of these. Add another 45 minutes to include two slots, drilling the ends, and using a 4.5 inch grinder cutoff wheel to complete the slots. Something I didn't do early on. Making version 6 with all the parts for the adjustability took over 3.5 hours before welding. Yeah, I timed all this out. My steel supplier laser cuts metals as a profession, so I could provide the steel already cut. People could then weld these up themselves or have a friend who welds put them together. I'm a farm grade stick welder. They are good welds, they're not pretty welds. So I'd prefer not to weld, but I could. And of course, which version of lift plate? And do I want to rent these out? So I'm looking for feedback of what to do here. Is anyone interested in these? And which one? Purchasing them as a kit? Or as a completely welded unit? Or as a rental? My steel price depends on how many I have burned. My choices are version 3, and version 6. But some people may prefer the simplicity of version 2, which I would kick up in the top metal to 5 16 rather than 1 quarter inch stock. I calculated the 1 quarter inch stock and it does work fine. And the 3 8 base is fine. All these work. Considering the time it takes to cut these, if you do not have a plasma cutter, I think I could make these as a good deal. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'll either make a second video of how this ends up or put prices and details in the lower section. Thanks for watching.